Okay, this is going to be a reshoot of the Lambda First Signs of Life video because I suck at YouTube and horked the first one. So this is actually done a couple of days later. Progress has been made since the first video was shot. So this re isn't really the first power up, but uh, in exchange for that, I'll show you more stuff. So here is Lambda number two which is now, I guess, Lambda A. All the lights are off. The door is open so that we can get to the inside. Uh, there's a bunch of cleaning supplies and stuff up here and where I was trying to scrape off the, uh, the mess up here. We'll get to that. Uh, the tape drive from my PDP-11 because the internal one here failed its diagnostics with a diagnostic code that the manual says is unused. So it's going to have to get pulled out and inspected. Uh, here is the back of the machine. This is where all the goodies plug in. These cables coming out are going up to the tape drive. They would normally go to right there. But uh, we have Ethernet and its transceiver because none of this stuff plugged directly into the wire back then. This would expect to have a thick net transceiver. Twisted pair did not exist. And uh, thin net was really new. But uh, I don't want to deal with any of that crap. So twisted pair it is. The machine will not care, I hope. Um, here's the SDU serial ports. The manual suggests you're supposed to use the local one. That is a damn lie. You want to use the remote one. The setting for this is uh, 9600 baud in 81. Da, 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 da. Here is our cleaned up and redone power supply tray. You can see the, the switch is in uh, on, not inhibit. Everything is connected as it should be. Here's our, re our uh, cleaned up 5 volt supply with our ghetto additional fan. Here's the 12 volt supply. The screws will be replaced on that soon. But, uh, and then here's where the disk drives would go if any of them worked. We'll get to that. This little divot is where the cables are supposed to exit. And here is our PDU, which is all plugged in and ready to go. Those three screws I were talking about in the last video are in. So, everything is ready to go back here. And then, even though I haven't ever shown this before, this is inside the back cover. This is how you connect devices to your cards in the back plane. These things here are called paddle cards. The ones up here are for multi-bus things, or the second half of... Uh, of uh, things and stuff like that. Uh, let me see. This is a uh, bus terminator. And uh, down here are the usual I.O. ones. Uh, there's the SDU's paddle card. This guy. With uh, all of its various connections and stuff. Discs and tapes. The network is on the end. And then this side this side of the bus, hold on, I need to be further back. This side of the bus is new bus, and this side of the bus is multi-bus. And you can see where the back plane splits into two pieces. Up here, those big huge things, here we are, are the power connectors. The big welding cables are 5 volts, and the, uh, the cables over here are uh, 12 volts and the smaller 5 volt supply. And there's uh, the bus terminator for the new bus end. So that's how things actually wire in. Oh, this. Uh, there we go. This guy is kind of difficult to manipulate one handed, so you'll have to bear with me while I get it back where it was closes with these little screwdriver things uh, and there's a bit of a gap here so you can get 
flat cables in and out, but you're not really supposed to do that. I guess the exception was made for the tape drive. But, uh, and this is the power cord for the tape drive. It's plugged into this little outlet at the top of the rack. This goes to the two fans at the top, neither of which work, and they will have to be replaced. Uh, now we go around to the other end of the machine. And this side is much less rusty than the other side. Okay, here's the tape drive, which failed its diagnostics. Here's the card cage. All of the new bus cards are untested, and so they're pulled out. I don't know if it will smoke when I plug them in. I hope not. But uh, we have some type of prototype color display card uh, that's not documented anywhere. Uh, memory, I think that's 16 meg, which was, I think, all you could have then. And then these are two Lambda processors. Each Lambda processor is on four cards. Let me see if I can get in here where you can see one of them. I might not have enough room. Uh, the cards from the... There's uh, a, one card that has the registers on it, one card that has the data paths, one that has the uh, microcode memory, and the other that has the actual microsequencer and, and all of those things. You can see they're labeled... Uh, oh, one, okay, no, it's wrong. One's a memory interface. One's data path. So there's a, RG is register. MI is memory interface. DP should be on here somewhere. Uh, there we are. DP is the data path board. And then uh, RG is the register board and the, and the bus interface. I missed one. CM is a cache memory board. The cache memory is programmer invisible and completely undocumented and one of the questions that has to be answered for Lambda Delta. Anyway, on this side we have all the multibus stuff. We have the SDU and it's very 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 dead battery which needs to be removed from the board and replaced before it starts leaking. Uh, this SDU is not the original SDU that was in the machine. The original SDU that was in the machine failed uh, shortly after initial power up, and so I dumped its ROMs and had to replace it. All that will be covered on the blog. Um, then we have a disk controller. Now the way they did the uh, the multibus I/O controllers is they mounted them on. Let me see if I can get one out. Oh, actually, you can kind of see it on the Ethernet one. Yeah, here we are. You can see where there's a, a normal multibus slot at the bottom, and the card that's actually in the machine is just a carrier with the uh, connections to the uh, to where the paddle card would be. Anyway, so all this originally none of this stuff was plugged in except for the uh, SDU. But now everything else has been plugged in, so we have disk tape and Ethernet. And I, uh, I have an arbitrary code execution exploit for the SDU firmware, and I am writing a program I can download to it that I can use to dump tapes, write tapes, and validate uh, boards. So, hopefully we should start getting an idea of what works and what don't soon. Here's the cable that goes to the front panel lights. Oh, that screw needs replaced. You can see where some more of this foam, I tried scraping off most of it, but I need to come back with the razor and finish the job. Anyway, so that's where it stands now. Da, 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 da. So here's our terminal. Okay, it's ready to go. Here's our uh, cheating power cord. Now, the uh, all this stuff is rated for 30 amps, so you normally could not plug this straight into the wall. But if you actually look at the back of the PDU, this side of the PDU, which is what feeds the processor box, 
is uh, rated for 20 amps. 10 amps were reserved for the disk drives, which I don't have. So I can be guaranteed that uh, at this end of things, which is the twist lock connector for the 30 amp power, its load won't exceed 20 amps. So I can safely plug that into the wall. Okay, so we should be ready to go. So I'm going to pull this closed so it's out of my way. Otherwise, I'm going to run into it when I run around the machine. Uh, once again, all our lights are off. So we'll aim this at the terminal and I'll see if I can, oops, I'll see if I can keep it aimed at the terminal while I hit the power switch down here. This might give people motion sickness. Uh, okay, here comes the power. And in a moment, there we are, except that the uh, serial port kind of horked it. It normally takes a moment to figure out where the spaces are. Oh, it would help if I could type today. There we go, much better. Now, this is a later ROM that I don't think was installed in customer machines. It has the ability to set up its own disks and so whatnot. This normally had to be done with a diagnostic program loaded off the tape. Over on this side of things, we have our, uh, let's see, where's the LED? There it is. The LED for the SDU is on, showing that it's alive. Down here, we should have all our fans spinning, moving air. There we are. And then on the other side, oh, you can kind of see it through the back of the board. We should have a run light. There's our run light. So there we go. There's signs of life from the Lambda. Yeah.